Okay, so that's the, that is the Great North Care Records discourse. It's not the Great North Care Record, and I think that's quite important. The Great North Care Record is a, a data sharing initiative across a large area of the Northeast. And um, this is our discussion room in which we can talk about it. So it's a great place to talk about very specifically on topic things like the technical details of how the Great North Care Record will work. And there are groups within this discourse that talk about that. And then all the stuff that goes around that. So how do we engage with stakeholders? And one of the ways we do that is by inviting the stakeholders to join this network discourse and they can ask their questions and they can interface very directly with the people who are building the Great North Care Record. Uh, so it gives you a window into the into the project and it gives the people in the project an opportunity to speak to the people who are going to end up using it. Um, so I'm logged in here as a, a training account that I've created um, and I'm going to take you through how to use this course, how to get the most out of it because I think um, although people quite often understand why we've done it, why we've built this thing, um, maybe it's a bit overfacing initially because it's a huge white screen full of text and you think well where do I start, um, what should I read first and you know uh, how do I get involved a bit more. So okay. So first of all, if you didn't have an account, then by going to forum.greatnorthcarerecord.org.uk, you will see there's a, a front page for non-logged in users and it invites you to email uh, Louise or Catherine who will um, uh, arrange an account for you. And they'll send you an invitation and then you'll be able to join and see what we can see here. Uh, the layout of the thing is quite simple this is just all the latest posts in time order and as you can see if I carry on scrolling down it will keep loading older ones and uh, and older ones and older ones so it's kind of um, it means that you never have one of these things where you've got to go to page two page three page four like you do on some forums it will just load it all for you um, you can use the navigation at the top to go and have a look at new topics. Well, I've got a new topic that I haven't read there because I created one just earlier, uh, an unread topic because I replied to it from another account. And then you've got top um, <clears throat> top topics that have been created. So these are um, ones that have received the most views and the most interest. Uh, so it's a sort of complicated algorithm of how many replies, how many views and the activity and the rec recentness of activity that it uses to work out what top means. You can also have a look at the, the categories. Now, for me, as a training account, I can see the training area, which I've just created, and then the, the atrium, which is probably the most popular area of uh, discourse. And these are like, these are called categories. These are sort of sections. Um, we can create as many sections as we want, and there are some private sections which we don't see on this, on this um, view, um, because my training account is not a member of those private sections, but some of you may have access to the private sections um, and uh, we can, uh, I, I can show you uh, a bit more about how private sections work if there's a uh, need for that at the end. So um, we've also got things like productivity tips, um, which is kind of handy, you know, it's a way of sharing useful things across the network and say, well, you know, I work like this, I found it useful and sharing that with my community. Um, the atrium, as I said, is a, a common place where we put a lot of our sort of general chit chat about uh, things that are happening in the Northeast around healthcare, IT, but also stuff to do with the, um, the Great North Care Record. Um, <clears throat> one thing that is probably worth saying uh, at this stage is just that um, some people ask me, why would we just, why would we use this and not an email um, news group kind of thing or an, an email list server? And I think the, the answer is, is kind of in the phrase called organizational memory. And if you imagine a list server, when you join a list server, you don't have any of the history of that list server. You just get the new ones sent to you as they're created. So. I'm on various list servers for other things. And you know, when I joined, 
um, there may have been a useful topic from the week before I joined, which I don't get to see. Uh, and unless someone forwards me that, I haven't got access to it. With forums, it's very different. You have access to everything, the entire history of that forum when you join. So it means that as a new member, you can jump onto the Great North Care Record and think, I have a question. Rather than just ask that as a new question, I could actually search and say, has this already been answered? And that's what um, really sort of drives the power of forums in that once you've got a body of community discussion on there, the community solves the community's problems. So rather than requiring lots of support from technical people or from, uh, from a, if you're asking a question about the Great North Care Record, for example, that representative from the GNC are having to um, repeat themselves and continuously re-answer the question. Once they've answered the question in a forum, it's always there. So you could uh, search for anything. So um, I don't know. Let's let's just search for a post and and see what comes up. So uh, I'm searching here for Anne. I just had a look for something that would have a. So if I was interested in uh, this Anne project, but I didn't know where to look for it, I just search. So search button is your friend. That is uh, at the top right here. So um, I'll start going through the user interface a little bit more. So this search button allows you to search for anything. Uh, you can search for users, you can search for tags, you can search for categories, and of course, most commonly, you can search for topics and posts within those topics uh, for anything that you're particularly interested in. Um, so like I suggested before, maybe I'm interested in productivity. So this is all posts that mention productivity in any way. And the search is really, really fantastic. So I always encourage people, if you're interested in a particular thing, get in there, search for what you're interested in. If you're thinking about posting and creating a new thread, always search on, that, on some terms relating to that before you post. Because you might find there's already a discussion underway, in which case, you don't need to start your new thread. You could add to the existing one. And that's kind of part of the civilized discussion um, mindset, which is to try and keep things tidy. So rather than as some, some um, email threads can get very untidy, um, where people uh, will just start a new discussion via email or a new list server uh, thread, willy-nilly even though there are existing threads um, with a forum it's really nice if you can try and you know find the existing threads read them and then add to them often you find that you didn't need to actually ask the question because um when you read the existing thread you go oh right, well my, that's answered my question so i don't need to ask and that's the you know the real power of forums so over here on the right we've got an advanced search section um, up on the top right are your kind of user controls. So uh, this, what they call a hamburger menu, three lines kind of thing, um, contains things like links to keyboard shortcuts, uh, the about page for this uh, discourse, our frequently asked questions, and then you can go to categories. You can also go to a lot of the things that were on the navigation that I went through before. Um, you can have a look at <coughs> users, and see who's around. So these are all the, the list of all the users that we have. Um, there are some user groups and some of these groups are open like Cafe Informatica. You can just join that by clicking on the join button and then you'll be able to see content that's in the Cafe Informatica area. So let's for example if I join that when I go back to the listing and see my categories I can see Cafe Informatica. Which is a, it's interesting. That should be working. There we go. So, Cafe Informatica is a little pub-based informatics discussion group uh, in the northeast, and um, so you can join and see new areas. You can also look at badges, and um, badges are a little gimmick, I suppose, that Discourse has, which are kind of uh, 
encourages again good participation in the in the community so um and you get a badge when you fill out your profile information you get the autobiographer badge um, when you use an emoji in a post uh, you get the first emoji when you quote somebody uh, you get a first quote and what these are doing is kind of encouraging people to use all the features and play with the features that, in, that are in discourse and make the most of it and I'll sort of show you through some of these uh, features as we go um, <clears throat> so then this little T thing here is actually my avatar but because I haven't put a picture in it's just come up with T for training Marcus um, so some of you when you start will have just a letter like that so let's fix that I can I can change my username if I wanted to and um, I could put in my surname here maybe um, <clears throat> and then save the changes. I can reset my email, uh, reset my password, sorry, from here. I can change my email uh, if I need to. So this is all my sort of user controls accessed from this T button at the top here and then clicking the sprocket. So that's what got me here. Um, so going across the top, I can see a summary of my activity kind of thing. Uh, that's sort of generally about me as a user how long have I been a member? How long have I been uh, reading stuff? How many posts did I read? How many likes have I given? This is the kind of stuff that I've been posting. So at the moment, because this is a new training account, I've only posted one post. And um, then we've got some notifications, um, <clears throat> messages. So I can send private messages to people. So let's send a private message to my other user, which is Marcus Bohr. And then say, just saying, hi. Uh, and then I have to put something in here. It won't let me uh, send a blank message. Over on right here in the composer view, which is whenever we start writing anything in a discourse, we get this composer. And there's a pop up here, like a little post it note almost saying, thanks for contributing. And it gives you some, the first time you, you, discuss something it starts again guiding you towards how to be a nice member of the community so criticize ideas not people and um, you know does your reply improve the conversation and, and get people to think about what they're writing now of course in a professional group like the Great North Care Record we have no real problem with with um, adverse conversational behavior because people behave professionally because it's it, it's part of their job uh, to <clears throat> to have some role in developing the great north care record um and uh, so by and large we don't have any problems like that but you can imagine that in other types of discourse instance um you might need to encourage the kind of wider general public to just think about how they talk to each other and because what we don't want is it to degenerate into kind of how some threads on Facebook can become quite quickly, which are very adversarial and unpleasant within a, a matter of a couple of posts. Um, so you can get rid of this little pop-up. Pop and what you see then is the stuff on the left is, is my typing and the stuff on the right is my preview. Um, so I can't edit the things on the right directly. I edit it over here. And what you can start to see is that I have some styling tools up here so I could make that bold and over this side you can see the preview on the left you'll see that my clicking the bold button and um, added these little stars around the, the, the word saying and that's something called markdown which if you're interested I can discuss a little bit more at the end Markdown is a very, very simple way of formatting text um, and it's used by thousands of different projects on the web. Um, it's a bit sort of daunting at first because you think, hang on, I've got to memorize how to do all this code. But actually, for this course, you don't. You can, you can just use the point and click buttons here on this row. Um, but when, when you get into 
markdown, you find that sometimes it's actually just quicker. So um, one set of stars around something makes it italic. And as you can see on this side, that's italicized that word. So I can undo it, I can make it bold and undo it. Um, we can add links. So if I were to add a hyperlink um, to, well, I would just use an example. Well, let's use that because that won't take us anywhere. That's created a link on this side. And the link doesn't go anywhere because I've deliberately set it up to not go anywhere. But um, <clears throat> anything, if you wanted to, to link to something, so you've got a button there, creates a link, but you can actually copy and you can directly edit them. And that's that's where the sort of power of of Markdown starts to become clearer as you use it a little bit more. And, and as I say, there's absolutely no reason why you need to use Markdown, but this is something that's there. Once you start getting into, if you were making a more long form discussion, uh, then you might want to create some sections and that can be done in Markdown as well. So you start to, develop some formatting tools essentially. So I won't go too too much further into the formatting tools, but suffice to say that they're all here. Um, you can make links, uh, you can create a block quote, um, you can upload things. So if we wanted to upload a document, we can just choose it from, let's see what I've got. Let me think. Let's upload something about GP at hand. Um, so I could upload a PowerPoint. I could upload a document, a DocX, uh, all the common off office based um, file formats are allowed and that will be saved into my, um, into my post. So, okay, let's save that. And now, so I've created a message to other me, Marcus Ball, um, which has a link in it. Uh, if I, or do I take the link out? Uh, and then I've got a, a downloadable um, a file attachment there. So if I click on that, it will download it. So you can see how you start. You can start to use discourse as a kind of knowledge base. So I happen to have sent a private message, but it works exactly the same. All the composer tools are exactly the same. Uh, if I was writing a post. So on that note, let's go and let's find my training area. And I created a, a webinar topic. So that was my original post here, training Marcus, discourse webinar. And then <coughs> other me replied to say, have you thought about having an avatar image? And actually, that's what I was going to do, wasn't it? So let's go back there. And um, Upload a picture. So I happen to have an old avatar. We can use that. So there's my old avatar looking quite serious um, and with slightly longer hair. Um, so I've added an avatar. So let's go back to my topic. And you can see that where it did say T, it's now got a picture of me. And I do find that people engage better with an individual if they can see the face. I think it sort of makes it clear that you're not a corporate account, you're not a bot, you're actually a person and you're discussing things. And uh, it, me it makes it easier to feel that you're having a a real conversation, even though it's in text form and, and maybe separated by thousands of miles potentially, um, and across time as well, because these threads can go on for, for months or years. Uh, but again, seeing the person's face just makes it more real. So um, let's reply. So um, I showed you the tools for uh, bold, italic, links, up uploads. This is bulleted list and, and numbered list, which is kind of obvious if you've used, say, Word, for example. You've got a whole palette of emoji. Um, and although, you know, it's a professional discussion forum, but sometimes emoji are kind of nice. The reason emoji have evolved 
is because they are there to um, convey emotion in a text format. And one of the things that text discussion struggles to do sometimes is, is convey um, whether somebody is annoyed or somebody is happy about something um, quite as well as when you're face to face, you have all those visual cues and body language cues that, that, that um, warn you perhaps if you've said something and somebody else is replying that they, they didn't like it, whereas you lose all that with text. And so emoji do have a function, even though that, you know, they, it can seem a bit frivolous, but I think sometimes it's quite nice to use emoji, um, particularly in friendly chit chat type things. Um, obviously varying with the seriousness of the post you're trying to make, I guess you don't want to undermine the gravitas of what you're saying. Um, I'll leave insert date and time because that's probably not that critical. Um, but you can play with that feature. Uh, and then there are some little extra options. One of the ones that's quite nice is to be able to build a poll. Um, I won't go into detail on that, but if you want to play with that, you can actually create a post that is a poll. So you, you supply the poll options and um, you can have, you can tell, let people have however many votes they want and you can choose whether you want to display the, the voters or not display the voters. So you can actually use discourse for quite clever things. If you, you're trying to make a decision in your community and you can say, we'll have a quick poll to decide what we should maybe prioritize for the next work uh, sprint or whatever. Uh, one nice feature is that um, if I want to quote somebody, uh, then there's some really nice tools for doing that. So having just selected what other me replied, have you thought about adding an avatar image? I can just click that quote button or I can use the, the quote button here, but I, I wanna quote the selected bit and it will automatically pull down what I selected and it gives you a nice little display around it. So where that's useful is if you're replying to um, a long thread and several people have responded something, um, you could reply in one post to several things without it becoming confusing. Because I, I don't know, sometimes you've got like an email thread, people reply to the last email thread and you can't tell whether they're replying to your reply or replying to a previous reply and it's not always clear from the context. So here we go, I'm gonna make it very clear. So Training Mark has said it was Discourse Webinar and I'm like, yes, I know. I wrote this. Um, but then, have you thought about having an avatar image? I replied to other markers to say, yes, I just did this. Thanks for the tip. And on the right, you can see my preview. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Don't get whooping cough is my advice. <clears throat> um, I have been, I'm told, vaccinated against it, but it wears off. Um, so my preview now reflects what has been put into the thread. And it's really clear who I was replying to and what they said and what I, I can intersperse my replies really cleverly so that I'm improving this topic I'm not making it more confusing. And that's the kind of thing that discourse allows you to do that email just can't do. Um, not only do you not have the history, but the tools that are in, in discourse um, just make it really nice and easy um, to, uh, to communicate in a sort of constructive and uh, simple way. Uh, what other tools have we got? So I can reply to any part of any post and what that does is kind of makes it clear which post I was replying to so if I was replying to the whole of that post I can just click there um, I can like it and that's a nice thing you know if somebody's just posted something rather than having to reply to say oh yes I agree uh, you can just click the like which kind of gives you a, 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 no, a notion of agreement without necessarily having to clutter the post with lots of people replying to say we agree. Um, I can share a link to that post. So say if I was in the discourse uh, productivity tips 
and I found a productivity tip that I thought was like so awesome that I was going to tweet it, then I could tweet it. Um, I can also reply to any given post as a new topic. So that's useful if, if a topic kind of diverges and you get um, a, a thread continues about one thing, but then you kind of want to split it off and say, just at this point, uh, where you mentioned some related uh, related concept, I would just like to branch off, and so you can do that by re replying as a new topic. Uh, so that would give me a little um, stub here that says continuous continuing discussion, and it automatically puts a link there. So in my new topic, it's clear that I was continuing the discussion from this course webinar topic and also gives me a link to go straight back there. So if I wanted to work out how it split off, then I could go back. So you can see how, again, Slate's tools for cu curating and collating good quality information um, rather than just having emails flying everywhere. <coughs> um, so I'm just going to cancel that for a moment and abandon that post. Um, I could delete my post if I wanted to. Um, I can bookmark it. Um, and so that's one, one nice way of, uh, if you find bits of information around in any discourse that you think are useful, you can just bookmark them and your bookmark posts are visible when you go to your activity. So you can see activity bookmarks and I bookmark that for future reference kind of thing. I could remove the bookmark. Um, but that uh, helps you to, again, gather knowledge resources that are useful to you. <clears throat> so we've been through categories, topics, posts, we've read some posts, we've liked, we've replied, um, we've done things like linking, we've done a search, we've posted a new topic, um, we have sorted out our profile and avatar. So really, you know, that that's a a lot to take in. That's um, a good amount of stuff um, to get you going with this course. I'll go through a couple of other things that will be helpful because I think some people um, will be asking, can I not just use email, please? Um, <clears throat> so this course uh, integrates really nicely with email. So what I'm going to do is just demonstrate that. Um, i just clean up my emails. Uh, <clears throat> so let's pop that up to there. What you'll see, hopefully you'll see my Gmail now. Um, so the discussion that we've been having in discourse gets emailed out as well. So this helps for this helps people who just don't want to go to the the forum.greatnorthcarecord.org.uk website and use discourse as a web application. Now I would always recommend using web application because I find it's a much richer and and uh, cleaner way of viewing a discussion. But for those that don't want to do that, that's fine. We've got email. So uh, <clears throat> you can see here I've got the email. It's come from the Great North Care Record network. The category it came from was training area. Which should all be familiar because we've talked about where the category was. This is the topic name and that's all the title. So that all goes into the title of the email and it sends me out. This is the original post that I created. That's the reply. Um, so it gets a little bit confusing because I'm replying to myself in, using my own email. Um, so a lot, it's all getting thrown into one big thing. But essentially what you can see is that it creates a thread, uh, just like it did on the actual web application. But for people who would rather use Outlook or would rather use Gmail, here you go. Um, and if I reply right here in my replying right here from my email client, 
Um, <clears throat> that will eventually get linked up back onto the original thread. And it takes a moment or so because what's happening in the background is that discourse has to um, wait for the reply to be uh, to arrive and then it periodically checks the the incoming email account and it does that every minute or two so it doesn't immediately arrive in discourse but within a minute or two it will do so what happens is it will get sent <clears throat> and this um, reply will be um, integrated, that's the word I'm struggling to find, uh, into the, the, the Great North Care Record normal kind of view. So it'll just appear here in a minute or two. Um, so that's a, a way that people who would prefer to use email um, can do. Um, let's put that back. Just a couple of other things about the email stuff. Um, Obviously, we're sending out emails. It tells you why you're sending, why you're getting the email, mailing list mode. And if you want to unsubscribe, <coughs> clicking here will take you to your account where you can uh, set your preferences, including just switch off all emails. Um, and if you click on this button, there's a topic, it will take you to the topic. Um, now, if I do that from here, from this browser, it will take me to the wrong bit because um, I'm using two accounts at once. So, aha. And the reply that I did from email is there. So that's been put onto the right topic using uh, Discourse Magic. Um, Discourse just knows when you email back, it knows how to connect it to the right discussion uh, in the right way. Uh, so that means that people who are using email clients and people who are using the web application have the same experience in a way you know they're contributing to the same uh conversation but they're just doing it in the way that suits them which is nice um <clears throat> whilst we're mentioning preferences to do with emails let's go and show you how to um get rid of all these emails if um, if they're bothering you because i think one thing that we do get sometimes feedback from is uh <clears throat> if a new person joins joins a forum and they feel inundated with notifications about stuff that's activity on the forum and um, we'd want you to know how to control that and there are lots of tools inside your account to change that so I went to my profile the sprocket that takes you to preferences and then on the left sidebar you can see I've got lots of options and these are worth exploring if you're a, a power user of uh, discourse to sort of see what there is. But initially I was taking to emails and we have chosen in the Great North Care Record uh, to enable mailing list mode. Now what that does is sends an email for every new post. The reason we do that is because a lot of our users primarily use email as their main uh, way of inter interacting with the discourse forum. So if we didn't do that there'd be no activity at all because people wouldn't see new posts. They wouldn't be notified that someone had posted. And so they wouldn't know that there was a discussion to join. Um, so mailing list mode kind of makes discourse act like a normal old fashioned mailing list on email. If it's bothering you, you've got a couple of options. You can, um, you, you've got an option to uh, send an email for every new post, except your own. So it will stop sending notifications about your own posts, which I suppose is a useful thing. You can just switch off mailing list mode. Um, now, if you do that, you won't get anything. Um, unless somebody at mentions you or replies to an existing post or invites you to a topic. So a way to find a sort of halfway house between getting everything via mailing list mode and getting nothing is to use <coughs> some of these notifications so these <clears throat> categories um, you can choose to watch a particular category so for example if I watch the training area I will 
automatically get notifications about things that happen in the training area. So I can then choose the bits that I want to hear about and I can also mute the areas I'm not interested in. So for example, if, it, if, I, if I've decided I do not want to hear about productivity tips, I can mute that area. And um, <clears throat> so that happens at category level. I can also, um, I can mute a topic as well. So for example, if my own topic is starting to annoy me, I can mute it. So I do that by going to the topic itself and here you've got a little set of tools uh, that allow you to change whether you're watching it. Now I'm automatically watching it because I'm participating in it. Um, but I could mute it as well. And there are various other options which I encourage you to explore. So <clears throat> that is a kind of whistle-stop tour of the main features of discourse. 